हेलो एवरीवन नमस्कार वेलकम टू माय प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन इच्छाधारी डेटा आई एम वेरी ग्लैड टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ टेस्ट फ्लिक्स इवेंट दिस ईयर एंड नाउ दैट आई हैव पेड माय ट्रिब्यूट्स टू अमरीश पुरी श्रीदेवी टू ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट एक्टर्स आर जनरेशन एज सीन लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द प्रजेंटेशन बट दे इज जस्ट वन मोर थिंग यू सी वेन यू लुक एट अ प्रजेंटेशन देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ लेंसेज विच यू कुड वियर you could look at this presentation from the lens of possibilities you can look at this presentation from the lens of constraints how is it possible we don't have the budget what about time what about organization my management etc etc if you look at it from that lens of constraints you would not find anything in the stock which is relevant to you or which could help you so i request you uh, please wear the lens of possibilities because we are going to talk about thinking thinking deeper into testing on that note of humble request let's get started let's start with the basic idea of how do we test so typically there's a test object there's an interface with which you form an input output relationship and outside that interface sits the tester or the test automation code now in this view if you see uh, what i'm pointing at this is sort of the point of control so a tester forms an opinion that this is my boundary i provide some input some magic happens in the test object and i get the output and now based on this output i need to form a relationship between what i see and what is uh, supposed to be expected and then form a decision problem or not pass or fail that's how things happen but the problem in this view is that the test object is thought of as a monolith a black box now some testers would think that just by changing the layer from top layer to let's say api layer and you move down the layers it becomes white box testing i don't think so i don't think so there is always this black box so the layer at which you test is always that black box which uh, you know you are not breaking it's only the knowledge of the next layer of internals which can make it sort of a white box so any time a tester tests there are elements of black box to it and there could be elements of white box to it if we want them to be that brings us to the second model of thinking in which we do not think of test object as a monolith we acknowledge that uh, the test object is composed of layers how many we don't know some of those layers are documented but some of them are thought of as internals uh those internals are at times appreciated uh by by the team sometimes they are unknown they are not really even thought about yeah and beyond the test object itself uh there are objects which i call participants for example your operating system could be a participant your hardware is a participant a third party service is a participant so on so forth so when you provide input as a tester what is the ripple effect this data or this interaction causes in the system is more or less an unknown as far as tester is concerned so it's more than a black box this data would go through various transitions it could be stored at various places it could take uh, various forms it could get filtered it could get rejected it could get accepted maybe it gets stored in a transient way maybe in a permanent way maybe it replicates itself who knows now in this view the notion of point of control changes if you really want to dig deeper then the test also has to move beyond the primary point of control to these areas if you want to monitor a participant you would need to take the point of control there if you want to inject in a layer and directly talk to a test object at that layer you would need to find a hook point and this is where the complexity of testing comes into picture and this is also the reason that even if this looks you know too complex i can get that it looks complex then why not start one piece at a time and that's what this presentation is about that maybe all the variables put together are too complex but then can we give a single variable at least its due respect and then sort of look at its journey through a system to develop better tests and that's what we are going to look at so the simple example which i am going to show you is from amazon this is from their live application 
what you see is that there's an Indian pickle which we are trying to order here. And the quantity field is the one which I'm going to look at. Now, if we expand it, we can see that the number uh, which is allowed in terms of how many items you can order, the range is from 1 to 11. So if as a tester, you're looking at this interface and you quickly decide that, you know, this particular variable is a number, quantity is a number. Precisely, it is an integer. And what are the values which are allowed? They are from 1 to 11. And the tester would quickly resort to now applying applying let's say, boundary value analysis here. But is that all? Is this variable really an integer? Let's have a look further. Now, if I inspect it and I look at uh, the DOM, the HTML, which represents this page, you find that this is a you know, drop-down list. And the value which you saw in the GUI interface isn't even the value which is submitted. The value which is submitted to the application is found in the value attribute. And the actual variable name is the name of the variable for this drop-down list in the DOM. So those are minor details, but the, but the thing is that quickly your notion of type and its ranges would change because there are no interface constraints here. This is not really a number. You could provide a string. You could provide a negative number. You could provide a very high number. You could provide an alphanumeric combination. You could do those long uh, string kind of tests here. To keep the thing simple, let's try the value 100. So I have changed the DOM so that uh, one of the options which should be shown to you is 100. As we can see in the interface, that is really reflected now. So when we submit this value 100 as a part of add to cart, what happens is what we have to see. So as you can see here, that although you were able to submit, you know, there was no complaint or, or maybe the shopping cart says that there's a problem with your order, but it ends up accepting it. But there's this magic number which appears now, which is 17. So the question is that if you are able to order, let's say 17 items, then why the limit was shown as 11 items when you were trying to order it? Is there something more to it? So you see, it's the same data where the constraint on screen one was different and on the screen two, where this item is now added to uh, the shopping cart, the constraint is different. But let's say we proceed with this number 17. What happens now? Once it reaches that billing stage, you see that the 17 is rejected. And now it is made back to 11 that we would not be able to ship these items but look at the cost was the cost adjusted the number of items was reduced from 17 to 11 but the cost was not adjusted accordingly and this is on the live application yeah is there is this a problem should amazon care about this bug i don't know i don't know to me as a tester i am not that decision maker but it's very obvious that there is something awkward here. This doesn't really uh, you know, deal with the data part pretty well. So considering this example, how are we going to think about data in such a context or for, or for any interaction which you do as a tester? An established model uh, which people you know, very often talk about in this regard is the indirect uh, input-output kind of model that as a tester, you provide an input that results in an indirect output and in turn that could result in an output. So it's basically this chain of input output, which happens. Uh, so for example, you could think that in Amazon screen, uh, you chose a value that led to another value at another layer. And then when it was submitted, it was submitted to another variable and that was submitted to another variable. So it sort of leads to this multivariable thinking. That's one way to uh, think about it. And in fact, most of the testers would be able to associate to that because that's how it is explained in, in the text so far, whenever it is to be discussed. I have a little alternative to suggest here, and hence the title of this presentation, Ichadhari Data. That rather than thinking of indirect input output like this, you could think of data as a wanderer, as a traveler, 
as a traveler through the region of your system which you're testing and at different different places it just chooses to wear different costumes it chooses to wear different personalities so at one layer it could be wearing costume one at second layer it's the same data it might have a different name it might have a different type now maybe there is some truncation in the data which has happened maybe some of the characters have been removed maybe there's a rounding which is done or maybe there is enhancement of this or maybe the data was submitted and now a, a representation of it is an md5 hash whatever so it is the same data which is sort of taking a journey through your system and along the way it wears different costumes it wears uh, you know it has these different personalities this notion would help you track data in a little different way as compared to established models and along the way uh, how to basically beyond this costumes analogy or you know this uh, personality anal analogy what you'll find is that it's useful to associate uh, four primary attributes to data when it does this travel so at any stage ask yourself what is the value what are the ranges which are available around that uh, associated with the type uh, you can think in terms of the length of the data you can think in terms of the overall representation the thought of representation for example would tell you is there any kind of encryption involved is there some kind of encoding which is happening so keeping all this perspective in mind when it travels from one layer to another when as a tester you decide which layer to engage in you would have good enough information on how to publish this data at that particular layer and there would be various interesting tests which you cannot do at one layer but you go one layer down you go one layer further and you would be able to conduct those tests that's what is the key message i wanted to pass to you in this presentation now some of you might think also oh, it means at protocol level we need to now think in terms of bits and bytes of course when you take this idea deeper when you start handling uh, rather than text you know kind of interfaces you venture into the uh, periphery of binary protocols you would anyways need those skills you would need to think in terms of what is little endian packing what is big endian packing how is a number packed when it is four bytes when it is signed unsigned yeah how is a negative uh, number packed in a protocol and so on and so forth this style of thinking for every nature of interface when you think this way would you be able to come up with tests no but is this a skill which you need as a tester of course when the low hanging fruits are done and when you're looking for deeper tests just go on the trail of individual data and you would find many 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 interesting tests i would quickly map uh, this understanding to the example we saw uh, we had uh, looked at the interface so there the the data the, the quantity as a data was seen as a number and it has certain limits so when you apply a test design technique there you would have limitations accordingly when we saw the same variable in the form of dom we got this freedom to try out different other values which we couldn't try in the gui interface the same input uh, when you you could say that it is indirect output that now it's the quantity added in the shopping cart but to me it's the same data its state has changed its meaning has changed so now you can compare the constraint changes and you can come across interesting questions of why why 11 was the constraint here why 17 what is this the, the meaning of this 17 number maybe on screen one it's the total number of uh, items you could order maybe on the second screen the constraint is the total number of uh, items which are available in the stock but what happens on the third screen was very interesting i i don't know whether with this indirect input output approach these kinds of tests could be uncovered all the time we as testers we need multiple models of thinking so try the model of ichadhari data in your mind and you might come across interesting ideas on that note thank you thanks for your patience thanks for listening to me